United Nations called on the EU to reach a deal to take in 160 migrants who have been stranded in the Mediterranean for two weeks. UNHCR Refugee Agency and the International Organization for Migration urged Malta and the other European states to speed efforts to bring some 160 rescued refugees and migrants on to dry land and to safety. The migrants are on board two commercial vessels outside Malta's territorial waters. Bangladesh slammed an international rights group's claim that its security forces beat Rohingya refugees held at a flood-prone island, calling them baseless. Some 306 Rohingya rescued by Bangladesh after being stranded at sea for weeks were taken to Bashan Cha earlier this month. Human Rights Watch alleged in a report citing interviews with 25 Rohingya that the refugees have been subject to interrogations and beatings on the island. Tunisia will reopen places of worship, restaurants and hotels from June 4, more than two months after closing them over the coronavirus pandemic. The reopening could be delayed if there is a resurgence of COVID-19 cases. Hotels and restaurants closed since March 22 will reopen at 50% capacity and authorities are finalizing sanitary measures for tourism facilities. IMF spokesperson Gary Rice said talks between Lebanon and the International Monetary Fund have been constructive and the country's economic plan is a good starting point. Lebanon is in the midst of an unprecedented economic crisis and has begun talks with the IMF to restructure its debt after defaulting on its 1.2 billion euro bond payment in March. Lebanon is currently facing multiple crises as the economy continues to sink and inflation is on the rise. Coronavirus has recently dealt yet another blow to the country's worsening situation. Egypt sold 5 billion US dollars in bonds in three tranches with maturities of four, 12 and 30 years, a document showed, as the country grapples with the economic fallout of the novel coronavirus. The deal comes after the International Monetary Fund said earlier this month that it had approved $2.77 billion in emergency financing for Egypt to weather the pandemic. Argentina, which has enforced one of the world's toughest travel bans against the coronavirus, plans to help charter a private flight to bring in rabies from Israel to certify meat of the country's packing plans for kosher markets around the world. The global lockdown meant to slow the spread of the novel coronavirus, which has snarled this year's plans with borders closed and air travel paralyzed worldwide. Demand for floating power plants known as power ships has increased during the coronavirus outbreak, which Turkey is sending to ships with capacities of 400 megawatts to an African country and a Middle Eastern country, with more negotiations on way. Floating power plants, which can meet the energy needs of countries in a short time with insulation, can be easily connected to electricity networks. The Trade Minister said Turkey's milk and dairy products exports to China will resume, adding that 54 Turkish companies will be able to export to China. In February, Turkey temporarily halted livestock and animal fat imports from China over the coronavirus outbreak. According to a new estimate by researchers at Columbia University, more than 35,000 lives could have been saved in the US if social distancing measures had begun just a week earlier than they actually did in mid-March. They said simulations based on several models showed that 61% of the US cases of infections as of May 3rd, more than 700,000 and 55% of the more than 65,000 recorded deaths could have been averted if social distancing and other safety measures had been in place a week earlier. 
Turkish Foreign Minister Mevlüt Çavuşoğlu and Russian Foreign Minister Sergey Lavrov backed an immediate ceasefire in Libya during a phone call. The two diplomats also supported the resumption of the United Nations political process in the North African country, the statement said. They spoke a day after the forces loyal to General Khalifa Haftar said it had pulled back from some Tripoli front lines, calling into question its ability to sustain a year-long offensive aimed at seizing the capital. The U.S. has returned at least 1,000 unaccompanied migrants' children to Mexico, El Salvador, Guatemala and Honduras since early March despite risks of violence and discrimination that have worsened because of the coronavirus pandemic. The United Nations Children Agency UNICEF said Mexico has also returned at least 447 migrant children to Guatemala and Honduras over the same period. But when the children returned by the US and Mexico faced added protection risks because of the perception they are infected with the coronavirus. Oxfam International, one of the world's leading aid agencies, will severely curtail its work because of the financial strain caused by the coronavirus pandemic, including the closure of operations in 18 countries at the potential cost of 1,450 jobs. The countries that will be exiting include Afghanistan, Egypt, Rwanda, Sudan and Tanzania. The Saudi Health Ministry will soon launch the third phase of expanded testing to evaluate the COVID-19 spread rate in the country. The ministry highlighted that the new phase will not include COVID-19 examination inside houses or by visiting residents. Instead, the ministry will provide different outlets and options to conduct the tests. It will establish drive through centers for testing people inside their cars in several cities, while also offering testing services at primary health care centers and allow citizens and residents to book appointments to collect their own test samples through an online application. As French authorities continue to gradually ease the coronavirus lockdown, Air France has announced that flights to and from Lebanon will resume on June 12, four days after Beirut International Airport reopens. Two flights a week in each direction will be available initially on Saturdays and Sundays, and tickets went on sale on the airline's website on Monday afternoon. Air France has operated at 5% of its capacity in recent months, with only a few internal flights and some long-haul ones. The number of Americans applying for unemployment benefits in the two months since the coronavirus took hold in the U.S. has swelled to nearly 39 million, even as states from coast to coast gradually reopened their economies and let people go back to work. That brings the running total to a staggering 38.6 million, a job market collapse unprecedented in its speed. A shopping mall in Singapore is deploying a newly developed smart robot to fight the novel coronavirus, not with chemicals, but with light. According to Derek Yab, whose firm BPA Group developed the Sunburst UV bot, the coronavirus disease pandemic presented an opportunity to test out a robot for a role that was dangerous, dull and dirty. U.S. apparel chain Gap is speeding up its rollout of warehouse robots for assembling online orders so it can limit human contact during the coronavirus pandemic. Gap reached a deal early this year to more than triple the number of item-picking robots it uses to 106 by the fall. Meanwhile, its warehouses faced more web orders and fewer staff to fulfill them because of social distancing rules. 